start recording. Okie dokie, so where we left off, we had, um, well, we, ha we had uh, circles and rectangles drawing and they were in the same system and we could add, add them and you know, look at that, they, they layer nicely because um, they're all in the same list and we can then separate them out and they separate cleanly, which is nice. So the question that you posed uh, at the end of that was what if we want to add triangles to the system? Yeah, that's right. So let's have a look at what the process for doing that is. Um, so like if, if we were doing this, if we were doing this the stupid way, um, like if we were doing it all object oriented, like, and we were, and we were stupid about it, we'd probably just go, oh, we want to triangle world class, triangle, extend the shape, and just sort of, you know, go from there. Um, and obviously that's not a very good way to do it. Um, <clears throat> what we really want to do is we want to um, take a take a leaf out of uh, Mike Acton's sort of book. Uh, we were talking about uh, the, the data oriented programming thing. And we want to really think about, you know, what data do we have? And how, how do we want to uh, use it? So Well, basically, basically what I want to do is sort of just go through that process. Um, and the thing about this is, you know, this, for this particular case, this should take like, maybe you'd think about it for like five minutes. Whereas, you know, for it's the same process for like bigger things. Um, but that could take like days or weeks. Uh, so and and you'll remember like some of the stuff on say River City like um, how how to do oh geez well pretty much everything but like um, how how do we do for example sorting that took a couple of months of like yeah, I remember yeah the tarjans and and in depth slicing too and... yeah and um, like I've I've got a notebook from that where I've I've just got diagram after diagram after diagram. I've got like pages and pages of like just sketching stuff out and trying various stuff. And oh thinking, man, I would love to see that sometime. Um, <laughs> Maybe in a session. Uh, I'll have to fish it out. Um, so I'm Well, it's to... probably pictures in my head with axes and stuff on it, so maybe not. But <laughs> it's like a really good idea to see sort of like the, the sort of, you know, visceral hmm. um how is this working? How it's being worked out on paper? I'll I'll try and uh, I, uh, I I used to have a scanner. I don't have a scanner anymore. Um, but yeah, I, that would be a good thing to to have a look at. So maybe we should have a look at that. Uh, I'll try and remember to 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 fish that out and see if there's anything interesting to talk about um, about that. But yeah, so like we're basically going to go through the same process. It's just this is going to be much much shorter because this one this is like a fairly obvious problem so <clears throat> um and the uh what else did i want to say about this um okay so yeah so this is this is like it's kind of a creative process so you know i say this is the process we go through but it's such a like free form like uh, we'll just try this and see what works and sort of thing um, so yeah, like, like the idea that you just sit down and start doodling out diagrams is actually pretty reasonable. Um, the other thing you want to do is like, think about what kind of data you have. Um, so for example, you remember on river city, I'm like, can you send me like all of the levels and like screen, like all, all of the assets we have so far and all of the design stuff, just so I can like, you know, sit there and processes like what things can we like what limitations can we apply to the system that aren't going to affect you know the outcome we want but will win us like you know we'll simplify things for example whereas what what yeah. things what things can we not limit um 
A really good example of that is if you remember um, our, our 3D to 2D, um, you know, we take our, we take our 3D scene, which is like, you know, we've got like a room, there's a floor and, you know, maybe there's a box or something. And we, we try and squish that down to like 2D, um, draw that a bit better. And, you know, maybe the box is here and we have like this situation in 2D. Um, and so in 3D we have like X, Y, and Z. And then in 2D we transform that to X, Y plus Z. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's like one of the first like limitations that got introduced to the system. It's like, okay, this is how all of our levels are going to be projected, but that by adding that limitation, um, you you sort of cut off if you if you imagine this whole process is like a tree if you're going to like cut off this branch it's like you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna head down that road and i'm gonna i'm gonna say okay we're not gonna try anything down that branch but that like drastically simplifies the problem space and then you know you might do that at several levels um, and and it's kind of necessary otherwise otherwise you're basically doing everything which yeah, is, is takes time. Uh, but you can imagine like we could have done something different, like, uh, you know, we could have done X and like, uh, let's say 0.5 Y plus Z or something like that could have been our transform and that would have changed the way the levels work. And, you know, if, if it were, if the art were done in such a way, you know, maybe we'd have to like select between these two on a per level basis or something. Um, yeah, I mean, we kind of, we've kind of had that situation. I remember where we had most of our, most of our views were like, what you drew. By the way, you've been holding out these diagrams early, <laughs> so much better than they normally are. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, the, no, most of them are like the right hand, like the diagram of the the y plus z. But um, you know, there were times when we tried to make um, flat levels, like flat two dimensional levels, like the forest levels and. Um, the fire escapes and never made it into the game, and those didn't work out very well because of those constraints. I guess mostly around pathing. Uh, yeah, in AI. exactly. So the the pathfinding system was like, <clears throat> and, and and yeah, and 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 the reason the pathfinding system was like that was because it was it came fairly late in the process, and it was like, oh, like every we we have what like five levels that are completely flat. And yeah, I think yeah, there, well, there were five. We cut it to three, but there were five. Yeah. Yeah. And I think two of yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exa exactly. There was there was a couple of them that were um, impossible to path because uh, the entire um, the entire system was predicated on like if there's an obstacle, you know, you walk around the obstacle, whereas in like. If you're if you're uh, just flat like that, and you know there's a platform and a platform, and you know maybe you have to jump there. Like the AI can do jumping, but that that is like a completely different problem to that one. And so it's like we'll solve the, we'll solve the one that does like ninety nine percent of our levels, and we'll um, we'll not worry about this one. That's right. Um, and then it was like, well, we won't put enemies on those screens. It's fine. There's a secret for you. <laughs> the forest <laughs> levels are the flat. There's no enemies. Yep. But then we, we made the environment difficult. So yes. That, the environment, and because that's actually the entire reason for the, well, not the entire reason, but one of the reasons for the milk level is because we needed the environment to be the be the enemy in that in those screens because there were no enemies to punch. So. Yeah. Holding an object and navigating the slower character is how you kind of fudge a design so that you can really keep in that constraints. Exactly. <laughs> oh boy. Um, <laughs> Fun times, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, we so so part of the problem is with what we're doing over here is we're kind of just 
prototyping a bunch of stuff. That's how we ended up with circle and rectangles. Like, well, we want to make, we want to do collision to detection. Let's just bang in a couple of things so we can test stuff. And now we've done that. It's like, all right, let's take that to the next level. Um, what kind of data are we going to need? Because if, if you're like, and, and this is kind of a question for you. It's like, all right, what kind of triangle do we want? Do we want to add a triangle just like for the fun, fun of it? And in that case, you know, is it, is it going to be like a regular triangle? Like, the, you know, or, um, you know, do we want like an irregular triangle? Like maybe it looks like that or something. Um, and cause these I are, think, yeah, go ahead. Oh, cause, cause, okay. So these, these are like two very different problems and you can imagine, you know, this one, we just have to specify, like, this is the same as a circle. That's why I've drawn a circle around it. It's like, we just have to specify the radius. Whereas this one, you know, we actually have to specify three points. Um, and you can imagine, you know, what if we extend the system? It's like, all right, well, we could, we could extend that and be like, well, if we're specifying the radius, what if we specify a number of points? You know, we could do, uh, that turned out pretty well. We could do uh, regular polygons using the same system. You know, specify a radius and be like five points. Or, you know, we could extend it out and be like, um, I don't know, irregular polygons. Um, and in which case we have to specify an arbitrary number of points. And so this is the sort of thing you like when you sit down to look at this problem, it's like, well, which of these cases do we want to look at and what's our final destination going to be? Because if you recall, we've basically been saying, oh, you know, we might turn this into like Pong with like, you know, there's a paddle and uh, some balls. Um, or we could make like a pinball, you know, we've got, you know, maybe a thing here and a, you know, a thing there and we've got our like flippers down here and, and this sort of thing. Um, and so this is why we want to think about where we're going with this and, and what the, what the different possibilities are. So, um, any particular thoughts on that so far? Well, I mean, obviously the one on the right is harder. Um, I'm, uh, I'm fairly convinced you've paid somebody to do these diagrams. That's my second thought. And the third thought is, um, in a pinball, I mean, in a, in a pawn situation, the one on the left is good enough. Um, because I think those objects, I don't think those objects even appear in it. And then, you know, yeah, we, we, we just pong. need rectangles and circles for pawn. But, um, that's right. Um, but for pinball, it seems like we kind of do want to head towards, you know, arbitrary spaces because it's really it's it's a line art game where the line art is kind of is solid, right? And is going to have physics responses. So I think you know you probably get a, you probably get more bang for your buck if you go with the arbitrary points as opposed to you know just specifying the number of axes around a radius that you're going to need like i think you know you wouldn't be able to do the paddles with a regular triangle or a regular um you know pentagram or polygon or something yeah so I mean, it depends on what we want to do uh, I, I think any game i think any game that needs shapes that respond to other shapes would, would be a beneficial library to have exactly so that's that's sort of one of the reasons, um, one of the best examples of this that, um, uh, that, that I've heard is something, something Casey said, I don't know where he said it exactly. Um, but it was something like, <clears throat> you know, I'm making, I'm making the library that does like, you know, that, that takes an image and, uh, scales it. Um, and I, you know, I'm in there and I'm working on the image code and I have an inkling that like, maybe, maybe I need to also add like cropping or something. And so while you're in there, you may as well just add cropping, particularly cause like that's, that's like a thing, um, that like you can imagine that the way you'd add cropping is like, well, select or you know if we're just doing scaling we're going to select all of the pixels here but if we're doing cropping we're going to select some of the pixels here 
and that's going to affect how we implement our, our scaling algorithm as well. So um, while, while we're in there and doing it, we may as well extend the system just that little bit so we don't have to go back and like touch this code again because you know it's a very real possibility that we'd add like triangles or even like triangles and be like ah well now we need to make it handle multiple vert multiple vertices and so we'll um have to go back and like try and remember how all of this works and stuff so we may as well just go straight to this point here Um, what else? So there's this other thing that I wanted to point out here, and that is um, there's a level beyond this, and that is what if we want like a concave polygon, and we already know that our algorithm won't handle this case. Um, but we do know that if we if we like slice this in two, suddenly we have two um, convex polygons. So we know that later on we might need to add um, a composite uh, composite polygons. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And composite polygons incorporating a a circle maybe as well you can't make anything at that point exactly and so that that's like you know how do we do that shape there well it's probably going to be something like here's a circle and then here's like a polygon and then here's like another circle and we'll probably just build it like that is, is how we'd probably do the paddles um <clears throat> What else? What else was there to discuss about this? Um, okay, and then okay, so here's here's where it gets really interesting because if we look at the code we already have, you know, we have rectangle, and what's interesting about rectangle is okay, it's a subset of uh, arbitrary polygons. Like you can make a rectangle just by specifying one, two three, four vertices. So the question would then be is like, well, do we want to have a specific um, type for rectangle? Any thoughts? Um, well, to be honest, my first thought was, why don't we just make the rectangle we already have into this and then extend it? <coughs> And on the other hand, it's like, well, we already have the shape type bite. So there's no reason why we couldn't keep what we have an experiment with a polygon shape type bite. And then maybe later the polygon eats the rectangle and we get rid of rectangle as a shape. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a, a preference other than it makes sense that you would, you could do that. I mean, although a, a, a rectangle is, is keeping the shape type would be probably good because a rectangle has rules and so you kind of want to bake the rules into the API so that you don't have to, you know, every time you make a rectangle, you'll get tired of thinking of it as a polygon with the same size and, you know, four lines or whatever, mm. always. You just, you know, maybe the rectangle code gives you some um, speed ups or whatever, you know, and just in terms of, you know, building them, how you call them and so on. So. Um, yes, you, you raise a couple of interesting points then. So, um, <clears throat> the first one is probably, you know, do you, do you go in there and do you just like, well, this thing's got, uh, where's, where's an example. So if we scroll down to this code, it's like, oh, this thing's got four points. Um, and then over here, it, you know, it's got four points to do. And we've even got a comment in there, handle an arbitrary number of vertices. <clears throat> so we um we already have this uh, uh thing where we're like well let's just extend this out from four points to however many points we need um, 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 um. <clears throat> so 
So, you know, we could, we could go ahead and just override this code, but there's an alternate way of doing this. And in a simple case like this, I'd be inclined to make this step directly and replace this code with stuff that does like any number of points because it's, it's a fairly simple transformation, but you can imagine a more complicated system um, where uh, there's a lot of like dependencies and stuff. And it's probably a good idea to have the two systems running in parallel and get the second system working before you rip out the original system. And this would particularly be the case if we were like, say, you know, every time we run this thing, we're going ahead and we're like entering all of the points. And you can imagine that if, if this data here were say being saved to disk and we actually cared about the data, we'd particularly wanted to go down this road um, because we wouldn't want to lose, we wouldn't want to lose the data. We want, we want to have a migration path to the new system. Um, and also there's, there's definitely the possibility that if we were to set up a new system and find halfway through, it's like, oh, that was, that was a terrible mistake and want to rip it out. At least we've still got the old system working. So there's a lot to be said for um, leaving the old system in place until a new system works. And there's a few times uh, in River City, for example, that we, we went down that road. Um, I think there was something to do with like the shadows, for example. Um, I think there was two different shadow drawing methods at one point. There's, there's a few things that we'd had like two versions of. We had um, two different ways of storing images in the, um, you remember when we converted over to the separate dot text files for textures? Yeah, in the image writer, there's version yeah, the old way and the new way. Yeah, so that, that had two ways, and that was very specifically because we wanted to keep the old data working. Um, and so, yeah, so that's that's sort of the consideration that you do when you're adding a new system. Um, so I think in this case, maybe we will, maybe we'll do it the, the correct way. Uh, but if I was just banging this together myself, you know, I'd probably just rip out rectangle and replace it just because I'm a little bit lazy really but um no we can we can do that i don't i don't i don't think i don't think we necessarily need the the what do you call it sort of practice on on that um, okay. but yeah no that, that's fine with me to not do that those are just original right. thoughts no worries um I think there's another thing that's worth noting and that is you mentioned like you know maybe we we'll want to rectangle it like the api layer and what's interesting about that is that's the thing we can do. Like we could have, you know, add rectangle and add poly and rectangle could just do the same thing as add polygon and it'll just set these four vertices for us. So we don't necessarily need to even keep like a shape type dot rectangle around. Right. Um, the last thing, um, and this gets into something interesting and that's performance. Um, because, okay. So we go down here and we look at what does rectangle actually do? Um, over here, it's like getting all of the vertices over here. It's like getting all the vertices. So there's nothing really that exciting. Um, I think that's it. But you know, when we draw it, we get all the vertices. But we do have this one over here, which is like get rectangle axes. So you can imagine that if we have just a regular old rectangle, the way we're getting vertices from it is going to be, um, you know, we have this one here and we have this one here. In fact, I think, yeah, we had actually why I was going up negative and that one there. And so we just have two axes, but you can imagine like, you know, if we're doing say a polygon like this, the way we're going to get the vert that get the axes is we're going to take the normals of every single surface. Cause those are the possible separating axes. Um, so you can imagine if we apply this to a rectangle, suddenly we're going to get one, 
two, three, four axes. Um, and like these two are kind of redundant. But then you can imagine, you can think about like, okay, well, what are the, um, you know, there, there's other cases where that could happen. You can imagine we have a parallelogram and suddenly, you know, we could have a case where we've got, you know, two axes, but if we did it the other way, we'll have one, two, three, four axes. Right. Um, and so that's kind of like, all right, well, we have this interesting performance optimization. Um, are we willing to give that up in the name of say code simplicity? The answer is probably yes, just straight off the bat. Um, because code simplicity is a pretty big deal, but there's this other thought and that is, well, like, um, where is it? Yeah. So we're doing, uh, in fact, are we actually doing it? We probably should do it. <laughs> uh, we're supposed to be doing early out. Um, this should probably break, uh, and just be like, yeah, they don't intersect, did not intersect, go off and try other shapes. So in fact, I'm going to add that now to do early out. Um, the thing is though, we're, we're, we're give, we're going to be giving whoever's using this, which is just, you know, us or whatever, but we're still giving us the ability to say, like, you know, get rectangle axes, get circle axes and so on. Um, you'd kind of expect a library developer to like, because we're probably going to only be using it at that level, you're going to want a developer to do the optimizations for the cases that, uh, that they can for you and then kind of hide the fact that they're using the simpler version for the ones where we can't readily like make the optimization. Right. So that might be a vote to keep the old system around too. So that's like, that's kind of, um, that's, that's sort of like the classic case before it sort of got overused, I think of, premature optimization because it's like well we don't know aside from ourselves over here we don't know who's calling get axes we don't know why they'd be using them um, we don't maybe like their code has an early out in it as well um, and so in that case it's like well is it really that useful to them and if they really care about where the axes are um, this is why it sort of becomes interesting over with the parallelogram case. It's like, well, in this case, if they really care, they're probably going to cache these axes. Um, you know, they're going to cache the output of that, uh, get axes method. And then if they really super care, they could just be like, well, is this axis aligned with this one? Well, we'll get rid of one. Is this axis aligned with this one? We'll get rid of one. Um, Right. And that, that generalizes a lot more <clears throat> in that case. Um, also I think, yeah. Um, I, I, I think if the end user like really cared about this, this, this is, you're right. This is like, you know, I mean, this, this is why libraries often slower is because, you know, you can't go in there and make the changes you need. But if we were like end user code and we're like, man, I really wish we had, you know, this, this redundant access information and say it was an open source library. We could go in there and we could add rectangle back if we, um, if we needed to, and we could do it in a way that was a lot more sort of set up to help our particular optimization problem. Okay. Um, and yeah, in general, it's like, all right, well, we've got get rectangle axes, and then we're going to have get polygon axes. Um, if, if we did both at the same time, and that's like, well, there's, there's actually a performance benefit to having less code. Um, 
if you recall in the CPU, uh, there's something called an iCache. Um, and oh, I keep forgetting the sizes of these things. There's the instruction cache and there's the data cache. And I think this is 32 kilobytes and this is 32 kilobytes. And this is where all of the um, code has to go. And so if you're adding a method for handling rectangle separately, you can imagine that that's going to evict some other useful code from the instruction cache. And then, so if that code then runs later, you have to bring it back in. Um, and so you can imagine that it is the case that fewer code paths, particularly if you sort of practice this um, fairly regularly, like um, how, how, to, how to describe this sort of in a simple way, but ba basically, you know, the less code, the less pressure you're putting on this. Um, and that can be a good thing uh, and often is. So you can imagine that, that the code that's like, well, we've got a special case for, you know, triangle and a special case for rectangle and a special case for, um, you know, poly and reg, regular poly and circle, etc. That's going to be a whole lot of methods and that's going to really um, pollute, pollute the iCache. Whereas if we have just polygon and we just make everything else in terms of polygon, we're going to put a little more pressure on the data cache, but not that much. And it's kind of pressure that we had to anyway. And we're going to significantly relieve, uh, relieve pressure on the instruction cache. And that can actually be more useful. Um, you can't, you can't really tell unless you uh, profile it, but um, sort of it's, it's an interesting thing to keep in mind on the first pass. So that's, that's um, yes. Renault, Renault, but art, isn't that the name of his blog, the instruction limit? Or is that what he's referring to? Instruction limit. No, I think uh, it's a blog. Yes. I think I, maybe about it wrong who that is. I, I'm actually uh, familiar with that. Why is my, there it goes. Um, yeah, I'm familiar with Renard's uh, blog and yeah, and it's called the instruction limit. Um, this actually refers to something else. Uh, I think, I mean, you'd have to ask Renard to be sure, but I'm pretty sure this is like max shader. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Maximum shader. So I did with that after the pass. Um, so are you, are you familiar with how this, how this works? I think we might No, have... but we don't need, we don't need to go. <laughs> I have a tendency to take these off course. So, um, oh, you know, there's, there's enough to know that it's, a, that that's not what it means. <laughs> the eye cache is not what you meant. Yeah. That's okay. Suffice to say, you know, if you're making a pix uh, pixel shader or vertex shader, particularly in the old ones, I think I did mention it. There's, there's a maximum number of instructions. So if your program starts getting really long, you'll hit the instruction limit. Um, so yeah, so I think that's, that's sort of the whole explanation that basically boils down to here's why we're just going to do the polygon case. Um, and so let's sort of get into what we have to do there. Let's actually look at some code. So we have, we have get axes of various flavors. So we're going to have to make a get polygon axis. We've got project onto axis. So we're going to have to make a case for just a regular polygon, but on the plus side, we can get rid of the code for doing a rectangle specifically. Uh, we have get mass. So we're going to have to figure out the um, area of a polygon, which um, for now we'll, we'll just shove that to the next, next uh, episode because that's a bit more mathsy, um, but it's worth doing. Uh, so, and this is the nice part is like all of our separation code, except for maybe like making sure we call the right method is actually independent of what the shape is, which is nice. Uh, once we add composite shapes, we'll have to maybe think about what we do here. Um, perhaps, you know, we'll have to combine the, the various separations of the, uh, composite shapes and move them as a single unit. There's probably, 
this is where the uh, composite shape handling will probably happen. We'll have to handle drawing slightly differently, although it's not that different because it's like, um, you know, if we have a, where, where is it? Uh, uh, draw a rectangle. So we'll have to change draw a rectangle. But, you know, if we look at draw a rectangle, it's like, well, here's all the vertices, draw lines between them. So we're just going to have a loop of vertices. And then finally, we have to come up with a way of adding a pending shape. So it's like, are we placing circles or are we placing rectangles? Um, so I'll have to come up with a way of doing that. And I think the interesting thing is, as I was saying, it's like we can just um, we, we we can we can have you know a, a place a triangle method and a place a rectangle method and and whatever we like, and it all just makes arbitrary polygons. But the user interface can still work in terms of um, of these many different cases because uh, it's you know it's the user interface. So. That's it. Um, the question then becomes, okay, where do we store the vertices? Um, and because we have an arbitrary number of vertices, it kind of implies we're going to need a list of these things. Um, and okay. I'm breaking this so that right? you don't sorry? normally want to put, you don't want to put a list in a struct normally because it would be mutatable after it's been declared mm, yeah i tend to not pay too much attention to that rule like um like the distinction between a mutable and an immutable um struct or even a class is a useful distinction to make it's like you can say you know um but the, that kind of the distinction is the distinction makers like this is full and perhaps you like, this is immutable after calling X, like, you know, after you initialize it. That's the kind of distinction that may, that you don't want to necessarily attach. Like if you read all of the literature on like, you know, how should you program in C sharp? It's like structs should be immutable and classes should be mutable or classes can be mutable, but in practice it's like that's actually orthogonal um and mm. and and you can like be like well look at vector two like this is absolutely mutable so that's um that's fine um so that that distinction is not particularly useful there is something that does happen and that is once you add a reference like if i'm like list two if I just add that in, once you add a reference to a struct, um, you c I don't think you can take its address anymore. You can't be like um, void star foo equals, you know, shape, shape, uh, address of shape. You can't do this like unsafe thing over here. Um, that's because the runtime doesn't want you to be able to, you know, actually get the bits of a reference. Um, right. So this, this is no longer what, um, I guess no longer what you described as like plain old data. Um, so that's, that's worth keeping in mind. But as, as I was saying, um, you know, we could be like shapes and be like, uh, we could make a parallel array like this and do it struct of array style. But for the time being, uh, let's, well, what am I doing? Uh, let's just stick it in there and let's just start coding. Um, let's go through, let's go through top to bottom. As we were saying, you know, we don't need to keep rectangles. So polygon and what's interesting to note here. Um, yeah, we can get rid of radius Y and we can, uh, yeah, we'll get rid of radius Y and we can rename radius X to radius now. What's interesting to note here is that we don't actually need shape type anymore because we can just be like, is that null? And if it's null, then, you know, we obviously don't have a polygon. And if we don't have a polygon, what have we got? We've got a circle. So we could just go ahead and make that change too. What do you think? Shall we just go and just go bite the bullet and do this all in one one hit sure 
Excellent. All right, shape type's going away. So, you know, we're, we're competent and capable programmers. We've been doing this for a while. <coughs> we're just gonna, we're gonna make it happen. This does have the nice property of now this struct is like, uh, this is eight bytes, this is four bytes, and this is a four byte reference if we're in 32 bit mode. Uh, so it's, um, this is a 32 byte struct, which, you know, gives us some nice alignment properties. Um, so we come down here, it's like, all right, we're placing circles or we're placing, <clears throat> uh, placing um, rectangles. So let's, let's just, let's do the rectangle case now and then we can just slap in um, triangle later. So we don't need shape type anymore. We do need this radius X and radius Y, but we don't need them in there anymore. And now we need this code that we have been copying around. And this is another nice thing. And that is we can stop like, um, we can stop copying around this code. That's like, give me all of the vertices. Um, so that's, that's a nice code simplification that happens. So we'll copy that in. Call it half with half, right? And not used to using my actual laptop keyboard, so oh yeah, be that's all right. Um, ah, that should be public. I do wish, like, <clears throat> I can see why they did it like, cause for a general use language. But if I was, if I was making my own C sharp, it's like everything would just be public automatically. <clears throat> uh, yeah. um, and now we have to actually, this is one thing we have to think about um, with, have we got any space left? Look at this lovely space in the middle. This is one thing we have to think about when we're doing polygons and that is, um, winding order. So if this is like, um, one, two, three, four, we're going to have like a vertex, uh, we, we, no, sorry. We can make a vector from point one to point two. And if we rotate it out, you know, counterclockwise in this case, we'll get our normal facing that way. Whereas, you know, if we were like, this is, uh, oh, let's see, this is, this is one, two, three, four. And then what would happen is, you know, we'd have this vector from four to one and we'd actually have to rotate it. Um, have I said something nonsense there? Um, yeah, no, we'd have to rotate, rotate it clockwise. So the opposite direction. So the winding order is actually going to be important um, later on. So does, does that make sense? Um, I didn't catch all of it because I was too busy fretting about the code. But <laughs> um, I recall enough about winding order. And at least you, you said, I'm going to queue that for we're going to have to worry about that soon. But no, I just I didn't catch it. That's all right. Um, we will worry about that more later, but suffice to say, we are going to actually care about winding order and we'll actually probably want to think a little bit about, you know, whether we want to go clockwise or counterclockwise, um, and so on. But for the time being, as long as the in an order, um, right, the same order, wherever we're using. So for example, uh, this goes top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right. It's like, oh, that's, that's, like a zigzag shape. We actually want top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left, or something like that. Um, there's also an interesting thing we could do here. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick a to do in here for this. And it's like, 
What about the radius? We could set it. Um, and this is this is going to get interesting later on, and um, we'll talk about once we've done this some optimization. For example, we could use the radius to be like, well, we only care about circles that are, uh, shapes that are inside our radius. For example, so we could use that as like an early out. Oh, I see. Almost like a almost like a bounding box around a. Yeah. So you you recall that last time we were talking about like the bounding x and the bounding y, and we use that to do really fast like. Um, Calculation. So you can imagine, like, so this is this is the thing. If we look at this code here, um, where is it? Four do separations. So it's like four shapes, four shapes. So if this is quite obvious. So this is order n squared. Yeah. That's that can be a huge problem. Um, if this co calculation is complicated, you know, and we're doing n squared times. That's no good. If it's simple, we can we can maybe bump n up a little bit. If we have like a hundred shapes, that's going to be uh, ten thousand calculations that we have to do. That's a lot, but it's it's kind of doable on a CPU. But if we like order of magnitude this up, if we have like a thousand shapes, that's one million calculations, in, and that's starting to get into hairy territory. Um, in which case we'd want to do something a bit more sophisticated. But if we're sitting down here in like the 100 cases and we only have to do this 10,000 times, it's like, uh, if we make that 10,000 really quick, that's fine. Um, whereas, whereas, you know, the ON case, which is like, um, let's draw the damn thing over here. It's like four, uh, this is ON, it's like 100 cases of this, no one cares. And then if we order of magnitude up, that's still 1,000 cases that's still way less than this, so we still don't care. But this ON2, that's that's something we're really gonna care about. And anything we can do to make that faster will be a valuable improvement. Um, it also uh, gives us some interesting things to do with cache. So it's like, we've got this, we've got this uh, vertices pointer. Um, over here. If we can avoid actually accessing the data in here, if we can avoid bringing that into the cache, because you know no one actually needs it, like if there's a polygon floating out here, we may as well not bring that data into the cache. We're saving cache lines, which is always a good thing. So that's probably an optimization we'll pursue, but we'll do we'll actually do that later. So we've got we're setting up our rectangle, we're setting up our circle. Now let's go down here. We need to get the axes. So get rectangle axes becomes get polygon axes. Um, and we have to do what we were saying just now, um, or just before on the whiteboard. Actually, this is the bit you missed, but that's okay. We'll just bang the code out because it's actually fairly simple. Um, and we have to actually look at the winding order. So we're going top left to top right. So we're going that way. We need to. Uh, yeah, this is this is the fun bit because we our coordinate system's also inverted. Um, I don't think it actually matters like this algorithm if this is our shape here if we end up with these this is our axes I think it will still work so this is why we actually need to think about winding order at some point but we won't think about it now we're just going to bang in some code um, so I'm just going to copy this comment that says think about winding order and stick it in here with a bunch of explanation marks um, So what we need to do is be like, all right, <clears throat> we have, um, we're basically doing this thing. It's like, we're going to take our, take our thing and rotate it, um, for every vertex. So, ah, we so over here, you know, we need to now pass in the shape source the shape let's match the other one um, <clears throat> and we will go for all of the vertices
This is I plus one. So if we start caring about performance, we probably want to get rid of that um, somehow. But for the time being, it'll do. It's not a, not a huge deal. Um, Is the mod just sort of big point the same versus and at the end of the collection or at the beginning? What's the ah? Uh, so this is this is the end. So when we okay. get um yeah when we loop back around, we need to go from uh diagram from you know vertex four to vertex one. We're going to need this one as well. So we have to um <clears throat> have to consider that one. Uh, so this is the part where we care about winding order because it depends which order we were. Usually we want our normals, the shape normals to point out of the circle. So do we take the 270 perpendicular or the 90 degree perpendicular? Um, so I'm just going to arbitrarily say the 270 perpendicular. And we'll come, come back and think about that later. So that should be it. That that's we're getting polygon axes just just fine there. Um, yep, that looks good to me. So now we need to get the axes for a circle. So if you recall, it's basically um, if we have a polygon and we have a circle, uh, the axes are like three, four. We just touch every single vertex. Um, if it is a circle, then it's like, well, we don't care. So we have our different type. If vertices equals null, other is a circle, otherwise it's a polygon. And we're just going to go for all of the vertices. And then we can just copy in this this normalized business. It's like from the shape position to the sphere, we're going to just normalize that, and that's our axis. So that that code becomes very simple. <clears throat> Sorry. Now let's take let's take, take your time. Um, all right, so down here we've got uh, <clears throat> what have we got? Uh, shape type of source, so we should fix out the type there. If it's null, we've got a circle, we know how to do that. If otherwise, we have a polygon. Um, and yeah, we just grab the, grab the loop that touches everything, and we go. We now need to do the projection, so it's like, all right. Uh, project is vector onto axis and then output is and now this is a bit where we have to min max this thing so we've got um, uh, what's this negative infinity I'm pretty sure we we've done this before, so that should that should be familiar. Yep. Um, and all we have to do is if uh, do, 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 projection is greater than max 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 equals projection, and if projection is less than output dot max min output dot min equals projection. Okay, and then that can all go away. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm wondering. I think I don't remember where this code is, but I've written this code already. Yeah. Um, I because I, I remember going into into that. Um, yeah, you asked me, and I said, yeah, I remember how. I know how this starting at the max goes. I didn't know about positive or negative. Either. That was me. All right, I kind of... Uh, oh, it's, it's over here. It's a separation amount. Oh, yeah. So we're picking the separation. So we're aware of... Um, project on axis, I... Oh, is this, this is just radius at that point? Yeah, uh, we, we just changed radius x to radius. Um, right, right. So that, that one I auto-renamed. Um, <clears throat> uh, so get mass becomes very simple. Uh, So over here, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so you're gonna have you're gonna have a bad time if you do this um, because oh, we haven't set that radius. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna be like to do uh, area of a polygon. We're gonna we're gonna cheat and basically deliberately introduce a bug into the program and be like, all right, we'll come back later and we'll. Um, do mass properly. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Um, okay, and then this starts to become really simple. Um, so, Okay, and now this is this one is actually a bit more interesting because this case here where we were getting rectangle this was used to be get rectangle axes. This optimization no longer applies. Um, so right. um, the only optimization is the case where we have two circles, in which case this one axis covers both circles. And we could almost like be like, uh, we're already we're already introducing redundant axes. Maybe we don't care, but we may as well keep that. So e dot actually that should be uh, if if I for this if yeah if not that. Okay, and then we can copy that code in. So, I hope, like, I, I kind of just blasted through that, but hopefully that makes sense to you. Mm, I'm gonna have to go back and think about it. Um, well. I mean, we'll, we'll, I'll bring out the whiteboard and just show it because it's really pretty simple. Um, so you recall, if we have we, let's see if I can keep this on one page the whole time. If we have two rectangles that are trying to intersect, in our previous system, there were only two relevant axes, and they were like that and that. There's no point in adding those two axes again. But um, now we have polygons. This other polygon could, you know, it could be a triangle and it could add completely different axes. So we can't do that optimization. Whereas the circle versus a circle case, if, you know, we go here, it's like, all right, this is going to be that, you know, the axis to there. This one's just going to go, oh, well, this is going to be the axis to there and it's going to give us that axis. These axes, these axes, because they're uh, although they're pointing in opposite directions, they're basically the same axis as far as the separation is concerned. Um, there's no point in adding both of them, but it's you know it's even debatable whether that's worthwhile. But we can keep that optimization, which is what this 
if statement is, you know, we're skipping it if they're both circles. We've already done one circle, that's enough. Make sense? Yeah, just follow just just following the logic. If it's not the case that they're both circles, then we check to see which one is the circle then. So if they're not both circles, we can um, we still need to check if this one's a circle because this could have been a polygon. So we could have gone polygon, then circle. Right. Whereas if we go circle and then, oh, it's a circle, we'll skip over it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to point out that, that you've got a bug here. That should be shape B. Oops. Yeah, copy pasta. Yeah. From the, yeah, okay. Number one source of bugs. So, and that looks like, it's like, all right, well, is that it? That's almost it. Uh, we just need to draw these suckers. So, yeah, this is, this is where the OO crowd is like, you've typed vertices equals null so many times, you need a computed property for that circleness. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I know what the is. <laughs> Maybe. Like, oh, like like this this is a this is kind of like the compression thing it's like all right this is this is my code at the moment it's like there's this dirty great comment is like null means circle that's really simple like any idiot can understand that and like hopefully people are you know reading the code and they see they see um you know vertices equals no i've even stuck the comment here it's like if i go here and i think the newer ide is actually show you this on mouse over it's like oh it means circle um if if this was like getting bigger and going out to a whole lot of other files then yeah maybe you put a computed property because the computed property would get inlined and um there's no sort of performance implications but it would literally just be doing vertice equals equals null um and so yeah it is a compression thing it's like i've got all this duplicated code let's you know bundle that into a method which just happens to be a property but you do that. You do that after. That's that's sort of the important point, right? Um, now right, we have to do this thing. Uh, yes. So, hmm. So this has raised an interesting point, um, and I hadn't actually thought about it until just now, which is. Um, doing this drawing and that is we have these vertices at the moment these vertices are in world space uh, come come back up uh, the code to where we're adding this this rectangle so you can imagine that you know we have I'm gonna I'm gonna add I'm gonna splash out on another layer um, So you can imagine, you know, we have the origin. It's like, this is where we clicked. And then we're going to add our rectangle vertices here, 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 and here. And the way we're doing it at the moment is like, those are rel relative to the origin. So they're going to be like that. When we move, when we apply some separation, it's like, oh, we separate it out this way. This thing is going to move, and it's like, well, what do we do with these? They should be relative to the position. So, and we could do that. We could be like, well, add the position there and stuff. But then that becomes tricky. So, really, really, what we should be doing in the first place is like, just make them relative to the position to begin with. So let's make that change. Um, hopefully, did that made sense. I kind of just bumbled through that. Does that make sense? Um, let me hold on. How are we getting away with this before? Because we, when we're, we're doing the drawing, is it, is it because we're already, like you said, that we're in, so in the space right now, right? So in the past, every time we wanted the top left, one right, top right, we were copying this code and it was like position, minus that or plus that, and we were getting them every time we access them. Now we have to 
basically do relative to the position. Um, uh, what do I think? This, we, that we have to get them relative to the position every time we access them still, because the thing is the position can move around and we want the vertices around the edge to be able to move around as well. And so yeah. what we actually need to do is like, well, the vertices, rather than being in world space, that is like that, we need to make them, what is their offset relative to the position? So this is the position It's like, all right, we want that. Is this just because we don't want to store radius x and y? Or, I mean, if we stored them in the shape, would, wouldn't that come for free? Um, no, because because you can imagine that, okay, next we're going to add like another, you know, else triangle, and we're going to have the same situation. We're going to grab these and we'll be like, well, a triangle's only got three uh, vertices, so we're going to do that. And so at which point, you know, radius X and radius Y, like these values are a bit meaningless. And you can imagine we'll have like a polygon that's like just completely arbitrary what's in there. And, you know, we'll have, you know, a whole bunch more uh, vertices. So right. basically we've got to do this thing where everywhere we've, we've, um, we've accessed uh, the vertices, we may have to think about, you know, do we want the vert vertex just in, in uh, the space of the shape? Or do we actually want it in world space? So um, go go ahead and just rip out this uh, this business here. Um, so I've just deleted the pending shape start uh, y and x from this and slap that in. Oh. You're right. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I just have a hard time. You've changed the names of this then? No, no. Oh, I changed the names of that ages ago. I mean, I can I can change it to the same as you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Either way. Okay. We're, we're, yeah, we're getting rid of the translation bits relative to the. Oh man, it's gonna take forever. Um, alt 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 click and drag is is the trick for that. It's like alt click and drag, and you can do a rectangular select. All right. Okay. So now we have that. Um, mm -hmm. All we have to do is come down here. Do to do, do. All right. We have to have a quick think about the code we wrote before. So it's like, all right. This is fine. Get polygon axes. What's interesting about the axes is they're relative to each other. So you can imagine it's like from shape vertex to that shape here. It doesn't matter what space they're in because it's relative to each other. So we can just ignore that. That can stay there. Uh, get circle axes. This one probably will care. It's like vertices, vertices that plus other shape dot position. And we're coming down here and doing project onto axes. That's also going to care. Uh, sh shape. Dot position. The mass, the mass is obviously irrelevant uh, where it is. So, but obviously we don't actually have any code for that yet. Uh, this is all the same, and all we have to do now is like, all right, now we have now we have the shapes. I'm gonna go up and grab this uh, loop here that got the from and the to from get polygon axes. We probably don't really need to care about the winding order in this case. Uh, okay, and then the from and the two, these are actually going to care about the shape dot position because you know this we want to draw the shape where it appears in the world. So we'll stick that in there. Um, and then all we have to do is we'll go and we, we can look in world, uh, draw rectangles like, what is it? It's line batch dot line. Um, and so from and to thickness, color, 
uh, what I'm doing, color.royal blue, thicknesses we already have, and I think that should be all of the code. Uh, uh, ah, okay, know. we have we have a minor, minus uh, nafu with the variable name, so we've got to change all those i's to j's, apparently. Looks good to me. Not sure. Oh, I see. Mine's up here. I was wondering what was going on there. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's not an unreasonable thing to do. I'll make make the same change. I don't know. I don't even know how I. I guess if mine was already different. Okay. Okay. Uh, just, Let's, I not, no, mine's not done yet. I haven't done that. I haven't had the ah. transaction world yet. That's all right. Yeah. So yeah, we need to we need to draw it in world space. But I think that's it. So do you want to do you want to run this sucker and see if we've see if we've nailed it? Yeah. Nothing should happen. I mean, right? That's the goal. Uh, yeah, pretty much. This should be exactly the same. But we'll have an opportunity in a second to. Yeah, it seems to seems to work pretty well. Not terrible. Yeah, I don't I don't think we broke anything. So then we'll do this we'll do this like the really I'll call it the you know the, the cheap and nasty way. Um, and that is why don't we go up to where we add the shape, and we can we can make this pretty later. Um, but why don't we just go and like, what happens when we delete bottom left? Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out where you are. Uh, sorry, I'm in uh, update under you know pending shape left mouse button pressed, uh, just there. So I'm just like let's let's delete. Um, No, you, you were just there. Keep scrolling. Uh, it's down here. Yeah, so this bit here, just, let's just delete bottom left out of that uh, list of vertices. So keep keep the variable, but we we'll just won't add it to the list. Oops. I mean, you can you can delete that one as well. That will that will still make a useful shape. Sweet. All right. Let's run that and see if it does what we expect. Well, I've made a mistake. Ah, <laughs> uh, funny. I was like, I was running the old code. But it looks to me like yours is actually at least drawing the shapes in the right positions. It looks like we have a minor problem with our place shape code, which we'll have to look at. But um, just uh, just code-wise, just like, does it do what we expect? It's interesting that I mean, direction doesn't matter. So if we go this way, it's that. If we go this way, so it's we that. could. Well, now, well, we have to think about winding order when we do this because you know, if yeah. we if we made the shape like down versus making the shape. Up, you can imagine that will flip the shape around and change the winding order. So we'll have to think about that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we could we could do it in such a way that we can effectively choose which corner this triangle ends up at. But as you can see, this uh, does this does the correct thing. So and that is how we add a triangle. The math is obviously wrong because we just made it one. So it's interesting to see what that does, basically. Yeah. So that we're back to that thing where you know we have this like huge triangle and this like little one in the center. And it's like the huge one's going to go boom up there, whereas you know more f physically realistic thing would be for the um, smaller one to do almost all of the movement. Uh, but we'll come back to that because that one's that's not a difficult problem to fix. We just have to do a little bit of 
little bit of mathematics to get the area of a polygon. Um, and we'll go in and we shall um, we shall go in and we shall uh, maybe make make a way of drawing an arbitrary polygon or at least uh, you know some some nicer shapes like a nice triangle. So uh, any questions before we before we wrap up the stream? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I think I'll have to go over this one again, but uh, on my own. But I think I think I'm okay. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean that the code transformation was fairly simple, but like I wanted to drill down into like the reasoning behind it because it's it's worth thinking about. Um, so next time we'll we'll look at uh, the the area. Uh, we'll we'll think about maybe bring back some of this debug code as well. Uh, we'll fix this early out. We'll we'll go through some to dos and stuff. Um, yeah, and the uh, winding order and, and winding order. Cool. Yes. Might be cool to change it so that tab changes the shape mode, and then maybe have a little shape in one of the corners tell you what shape you're working on. Exactly. Yes, that's that's probably uh, where we want to head with that as well. All right, uh, let's uh, close the stream. See you later, YouTube.